joining us here for our Subway ACC football championship game pregame press conference. We will go directly to you for an opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, it's obviously great to be down in Charlotte um, for this championship game, and uh, it's an honor for our team to come down here and represent the Coastal Division. Um, again, you know, couldn't be more excited. We've had a great week of practice. Um, you know, we got a great Wake Forest team, and uh, Coach Clausen does a great job coaching them. Uh, tremendous football coach, tremendous person. I have a ton of respect for him, and um, you know, can't wait to you know tee it up at eight fourteen. Questions. All right, as always, if everybody could use the raise your hand function and then we'll uh, call on you, you can unmute your line at that point. Our first question is from Alvaro Torres. Alvaro, go ahead. Hi, Coach Narduzzi. I hope you're having a great day. Well, Kenny Pickett has been named the ACC Player of the Year. What can you tell us about his development as a player throughout the season? And were you expecting him to come out with this award leading up to this season? Um, you know, you never, you know, you're not thinking about awards. Did I think we'd be sitting in Charlotte having Kenny Pickett number eight, QB one, uh, running off that yeah, but you're not sitting here thinking, you know, is he going to be a Heisman candidate? Is he going to be the player of the year? You know, I kind of forgot that they even had a player of the year until you get to your ballot and you, and you vote and you can't vote for your own guys, of course. Um, you know, you kind of go down through the list of, of what you have to vote for. So that's nothing we look at. But, you know, Kenny's development through the season, um, you know, I think it's, you know, well mentioned here through the year. I mean, he started off the same way he's he's been finishing, uh, at least the regular season. We needed him, you know, to have one of his best games tomorrow versus, you know, an explosive Wake Forest offense. So, you know, could could be a barn burner. And um, you know, we got to score just one more point than they do. But Kenny's a tremendous football player. Uh, I think you know his pocket presence, his ability to throw the ball down the field compared to some of the other guys out there um, in the country, um, you know, speaks for itself. Okay, our next question is from Chris Heidel. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Coach Produzzi. Uh, congratulations on winning the championship uh, in the Coastal Division. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Um, talk about um, you guys have been there before, uh, a couple of years ago with the rain and all that stuff down there. Do you feel like you know a little more? What did you learn from that game that helped you this week prepare for this week's game? You know, I went back and looked at some of my notes and what we did, and you know, I won't share any secrets. Um, but you know, to me, you can talk to your kids about it. And, you know, but they, they, they have their own feelings about it. Okay. Um, I think, you know, back when we clinched it, we actually beat Wake Forest, you know, at Wake Forest to clinch it and didn't finish up the season the way we wanted it to. Um, but when we did clinch, um, you know, I think our kids were excited to be there. And uh, it's just been, you know, and I told them, hey, listen, you know, we don't want to be there. We don't want to be that team that's just excited to be in Charlotte. We want to be excited after the game. And, you know, I've, I've experienced that. You know, we went and, Michigan State, when I was a defense coordinator, then we played Wisconsin with Russell Wilson. Uh, some of the locals have heard this. And uh, when we got beat by him, um, last second of the game, actually roughed the punter. Um, and, you know, Keyshawn Martin took it all the way back that we were going to win the game, but we lost it. Uh, but the next time we went back, we beat Urban Meyer, the number one team in the country. Um, so just kind of, you know, going, I think, is a big advantage in knowing what you're in for. Someone can talk to you about it, but until you've done that, been there, I think that's an advantage. If I can follow up real quick, um, talk about our good friend from Frederick, Maryland, your Jordan Edelson, your, your good wide receiver. Um, just talk about his development, because it seems like when I talked to him in the summertime, he was very shy. He seems like he's more outgoing now. He's still shy, Chris. He's still shy, um, you know, but he's developed. His mother, you know, his mother talks about it all the time how, you know, she talks a lot to him. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's quiet. He's humble. That's what I love about him. He just plays football. He's not a guy like, hey, coach, I'm not getting enough catches. I mean, he doesn't care about that. He wants to win. He wants to play receiver. You know, and maybe another thing, you know, you talk about Blitnikoff that hasn't got out there enough is the guy blocks. He's not one of these prima donna wideouts out there that doesn't block anybody. There was a play, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, where he took and knocked two guys down uh, on, a, uh, on a block. It was like, wow, and this guy's not thinking he's too good. So he's a complete player. He's developed, you know, in his two years at Pitt. All right, our next question is from Dalton Coppola. Go ahead, Dalton. Hi, Pat. Thanks for taking the time. Um, I noticed you um, obviously took note of the students waiting outside the William Pitt Union for uh, student tickets to head down to Charlotte, and you brought the pizza. Um, what can you say to that um, sort of atmosphere around the student body surrounding this game? 
I think there's a lot of excitement in Pittsburgh generally, um, not only on campus, but everywhere. I get a lot of text messages from people. So, um, you know, can't say enough about, the, you know, I saw them out there, you know, I'd heard about it. Actually, uh, I think one of our assistants, you know, said, look, if there's you know, people outside, I was like, hey, let's go. Um, I wanted to be there and let them know how important they are. And our next question is from Jenna Horner. Jenna, go ahead. Pat, you just described the excitement around Pittsburgh. How do you describe the excitement, the emotion among you guys in your locker room right now? We kind of have talked to some of the guys throughout the week and they're saying they're a little bit even keel, but how would you kind of describe the emotions right now for you guys? Yeah, I hope they're, you know, Jenna, I hope they're even keel because that's kind of how I am. I feel like it's just any other Friday. Uh, we got here a little bit early. That's about the only difference um, in the trip here. So um, I hope they're even keel. I don't, you know, the, the excitement is, you know, hopefully after the game. Um, but, you know, going to lead into the game, it's just about, you know, focusing on your job, doing your job one play at a time and, uh, and winning your one-on-ones, you know, on offense and defense and special teams. And our next question is from Chris P. Go ahead, Chris. Um, sort of along those lines a little bit. I know you guys just played a primetime game last week, but what will you do with the team tomorrow? Like, what's your approach? You got a long time until 8 o'clock. You said 8.14 or 8.15, and that's a lot of hours to – sit around and stare at the walls. What will you do with the players and, and what do you kind of have planned? We're going to stare at the, the walls, you know, stare at the players for a while, Chris. Uh, good to see your face. Um, you know, we've, we've got a plan, which we do any night game. Um, we'll go to a movie this evening just to kind of get them relaxed. Uh, that's our that's our, our deal. And then tomorrow morning, you know, they got 930 wake up. Um, we'll have a special teams call out. We'll have, you know, a 30 minute special teams meeting, a 45 minute offense defense meeting. And then, you know, they'll have lunch and then, we're, you know, we also have what we call activation and mobility. So we'll get them moving uh, with our strength coaches, which is outstanding, just to kind of get them active. And then we're going to try to go get them, you know, power nap or a long nap. So we've, we even, we've got it down to where, you know, they're taking either a 20 minute or less nap or a 90 minute or more. So they got a big three hour, three and a half hour uh, window just to kind of go back to the rooms and relax. Um, so they'll probably be on their phones, hopefully, you know, um, you know, getting their nap in, which I think they do. Um, but, you know, again, it's all it goes all the way down to measuring what kind of nap and how long is it. And our next question is from Alvaro Torres. Alvaro, go ahead. You're muted. Alvaro, oh, yeah. so, sorry, I was muted. Eddie Berry has been one of the most dominant receivers in the FBS this season. What would you say are the main challenges he poses? Uh, and is it possible to take a player like him off the game? I'm sorry, can, uh, can you mention that again? You kind of broke up a little bit. You're talking about Jordan Addison, I'm assuming? I, I was talking about A.T. Perry. He has been one of the most oh. dominant receivers in the FBF this season. Right. Well, no, A.T. is, AT, you know, he's a, he's a great football player. I mean, he's six foot five. He's long arms. Does a good job at, you know, getting some push off on you, you know, in the route. We got to do a good job at making sure he doesn't push off on us. When they push us off, we'll probably get called for holding, um, but hopefully, hopefully not, um, because as soon as that happens, that first instinct is to to grab on, you know, because he's a big, long, levered guy. Uh, so we got to be careful, um, but we got to be physical at the line of scrimmage, which is our plan, uh, like normal. Um, and uh, he's a tremendous football player. He's 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 definitely a guy you got to stop. Our next question is from Amanda Philipsic Godsey. Go ahead, Amanda. Hi, Pat. Um, I was wondering, you mentioned you want the team to be even killed. How important has it been? You have some older players, the super seniors, obviously Kenny, Phil Campbell, guys like that, that have been in the ACC championship before. How important has it been to have their leadership with the younger guys like Jordan and Izzy and those guys? Yeah, it's, it's certainly important, Amanda. Um, you know, having guys that have been there already there, they can tell their stories and tell you what happened. Um, and I think that's really important. Had it been... You know, we went in 2018 and we don't go again until 2025. It's it's a uh, it's a watch. I'd have to bring somebody back from that era, or maybe bring the entire team back and tell them what happened and what not to do. Uh, so they listen. Sometimes they don't listen to us old people. And our next question is from Jerry DePaula. Go ahead, Jerry. Pat, uh, you guys have known you're, you're playing in this game for almost two weeks now. Describe the eagerness amongst your guys in the locker room to finally get this thing kicked off and maybe they would be anxious to even be okay with playing tonight. Yeah, I think they probably would be anxious and playing tonight. Um, you know, I think the thing that helped us, Jerry, is we didn't know who it was going to be, okay, uh, until we were about teeing it up against Syracuse last week up in New York. So 
I think that helped because there was no opponent. It's like we're in it, but we ain't playing anybody yet. So um, I think that's helped. But, you know, our, our guys are certainly eager uh, to play, you know, game number 13 and, and, and try to get number 11, be one and know this week. Our next question is from Chris Peak. Go ahead, Chris. You uh, you mentioned that if you had gone between 2018 and 2025, you'd bring the whole team back to talk. Do you have anything? Uh, what do you have planned for tomorrow night? Do you have anybody special coming in to talk to the team for the game? Tomorrow night? No, tonight we do. Um, I'm not going to release it right now. I guess we usually kind of. I don't want to um, release it yet, but uh, usually it's a pregame meal. You know, we'll introduce them tonight, and then uh, release a little video tonight, as you know, Chris, and then. They'll talk to the team, I guess, tomorrow pregame. Okay, just a reminder to use the raise your hand function. You have a question. Do we have any other questions? Uh, Jerry, you're I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask a silly one, uh, Pat. Uh, do you plan your, your pregame speeches or are you just off the cuff, whatever comes to your mind? Um, you know, yeah, I think there's a kickoff plan. I'm talking about. Yeah, I think there's a plan for every everything, you know, what am I saying here? What am I saying there? And just like I tell our captains, hey, don't go into a you know team meeting because they they meet with them, you know, tonight before we go to bed and before snack, the captain's got them. Like, you know, I, I think there's you've got to always have a plan. You can't be a teacher and get to class and kind of go look at them like, okay, turn to chapter eight, 19 and read. Uh, I think you always have to have a plan of hey, what what's important tonight, what's important tomorrow, um, what's what's important, you know, right before the game. And we'll go to Jenna Harner. Go ahead, Jenna. Pat, you kind of also talked about, you know, the fans and just the support that the Pitt community has shown. Do you have anything special? Do you guys have anything special planned for the fans that are coming down to Charlotte in droves? Um, I don't. But uh, I guess what we have you know, planned is, is to uh, play the best football game of the year. Uh, that's, to me, the best gift we could give them. And, and, uh, and again, you know, share that moment with them after the game in that stadium. Our next question is from Chris Peak. Go ahead, Chris. You mentioned the captains talk to the players, Pat. Is that mostly Kenny kind of getting guys fired up? Or I mean, who who sort of leads that on a weekly basis? You know what? I don't I don't tell them that's on them, but I think they each say something or they say, hey, you, you know, I think they have a plan. And I don't <laughs> dig into their plan. That's none of my business. Um, but I think they have a plan. Um, I've never asked, like, hey, who's who's in there talking? Who's doing the most? Um, I have an idea who talks the most. Um, but you know, that's, you know, that's their deal. And, and I, you know, we coaches walk out, so we don't, we don't sit in or listen to it. It's on, it's on them, but I think it's important to let those guys have that opportunity to talk to the team and tell them what they, you know, tell them what's on their mind. I also wanted to ask you just, uh, not as a follow-up to that directly, but I was curious your thoughts because this time of year, there's always conversations about conference versus conference, which conferences are better than others. And I was curious your opinion. How do you, what do you think is the best way to measure conferences? Is it bowl records, non-conference records, rankings? You know, what, what do you, how do you compare conferences? And I guess, what would you, you know, how would you make a case for the ACC? That's a, you know, it's a great question. I'm not going to bash any other, you know, power five conferences because they're all good. Um, but, you know, I, I, it starts off with quarterbacks. Okay. I think it starts off, you know, who are the top quarterbacks in the country? Where are they playing and what, you know, what conference and how many you have? Um, and I said this since I first got here, the quarterbacks in the ACC compared to what we said, you know, saw in the Big Ten, football has not changed that much. It's just a different deal. And again, I can compare Big Ten um, and ACC compared to some others, you know, you know, compared to the SEC or the Big 12 or whatever it may be. Um, you know, I got more knowledge there, but you know, I think it comes down to you know, who they play and who are they beating and how are they beating them, too. So, um, you know, it's, it's a hard, you know, it's a hard thing to uh, figure out, that's for sure. Okay, do we have any other questions? All right, seeing no other questions, we'll conclude the press conference. Thank you, Coach Narduzzi. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks. We'll see you post-game. <laughs>